day three. We made it. If you've been keeping up with the series so far, you know that I'm eight and six, but I have a massive spread. Uh, it put me inside the top 15 after two days, which you know is about where I expected to be in a national top 15, top 20, somewhere in there. Um, but I teased in this last video, my goals at this nationals were to avoid scrabble politics at all cost. Uh, anytime that conversation came up, I just shut it down. And also, uh, well, to make it to board one, once. And because I snuck into the top 15 and I hadn't played the guy in first yet, uh, TSH, the, the pairing program, decided I'm going to play Will Anderson, who is in first, at board one. So my goal was uh, achieved. Board one is a different kind of beast. If you've ever uh, seen the Nationals or kept up with the live coverage, at board one they have annotators on both sides of the board. They just write down the racks of each opponent and record their plays and update them live onto the uh, NASPA website. So it's a pretty big deal. I had been annotated at a tournament before. That was just the Dallas Open, um, not nearly as high stakes. And, and at the time, I was like a 1,600-rated player who just fluked my way up there. So needless to say, A, one, I'm very nervous about this. But two, I'm, I'm very excited. And I kind of got in my own head a few times during the game. But it also made me slow down quite a bit, not rush any one turn in the game. Uh, one other thing I'd like to point out is I know the Nationals were in Reno in the summer, but it was freezing in the playing room, and that's going to come into play in just a minute. All right, without further ado, here is my first ever annotated game at a Nationals against Will Anderson, who, again, is currently in first place, and if you don't know, has already won a Nationals. Now, my opening rack is right there, A-H-H-O-P-V-Z, and there's really not a lot to do with this rack. You just gotta play Zap. And so I did. And uh, I made the mistake of telling Will that this was my first game on board one. And I do have a reputation for not really knowing words compared to most of the other top experts in Division One. Word knowledge has always been the big hole in my game, and a lot of people know that too. But not a lot of people are ballsy enough to drop a phony high prop bingo on the first turn. And that's exactly what Will does. I think he figures he can get away with it, given the circumstances, given the board. So he plays Melanos um, like this. M -A Melanos, uh, spelled O-U-S. That is valid. Uh, spelled O-S-E. It is not. And uh, I held the word. I wrote down the rack. It looked really bad to me, really unfamiliar. And uh, Will was right. I just couldn't pull the trigger. I'd be too embarrassed to lose a turn on, or lose a turn, lose a challenge on turn one in my first annotated game. So gutsy call by Will. I do think not enough people deliberately phony, especially against me, uh, but, but you know, across the board in Scrabble. Some people think it's poor sportsmanship. I think, you know, against a player, you know, 1,500 points lower than you, it's maybe bad form. And uh, if you're winning a game by 100, don't do it, Josh Sokol. Um, but in this circumstance, I have, you know, no ill will towards Will for doing this, no pun intended. Um, good play by Will, and actually it's it's extra sneaky because melanosis is good, and the plural of that is melanoses, and Will knows that. Will has studied nines, and Will knows that he can hook that with an S. You know, that looks like an adjective eight, it shouldn't take an S, so real kudos to Will. This is why he's, you know, was in first place and probably the best player who lives in North America right now in TWL, even though he mostly studies Collins. Um, really good stuff. Uh, I kept my two H's and my V, and uh, that's going to stick with me here. I've, I'm sorry, I have two H's in there. A-E-G-H-H-O-V. And this turn really baffled me for a while. Um, I could not figure out what to do. Now, my plan coming into this game was if I had the opportunity, I would try and close the board on Will. Um, Will's a solid player, he's good at a lot of stuff, but I feel like if there is a weakness in his game, it's probably closing the board. I had a confidant telling me the same thing going in, I'll oh, just close the board on Will. Um, and so a lot of that together kind of pushed me to play Genev right here through the end. Um, you know, it's a pretty defensive play, and you don't want to play defense when you're losing, you know, your opponent's being good on the first turn, but at the same time, Genev gives very little back compared to some of these other plays, like just throwing shove out there for whatever reason, or heave, or, you know, ogum, or something like that. Um, speedy player Quackle also likes it. I feel crazy, you know, keeping double H's two turns in a row, but uh, Genev handily wins a sim. 
seems like the right thing to do. And one thing you want to think about, I hardly ever get to play a game when I'm like clearly, clearly an underdog. I like to think of myself at my peak at like a 1950 to 2000 player. Oh, Will's a 2100 player, a 2150 player. And so when you're an underdog, doing things like Genev are actually pretty cool because Genev sets up a really important S hook, right? And I might not have an S right now, but neither does Will, maybe. And uh, if you can make the game come down to these coin flippy, like 50-50 type decisions as an underdog, that's a good thing. So that was another thing that drew me to Genev, like, well, an S is important. Okay, let's see if I can get lucky, because I'm probably going to have to get lucky to beat Will. I don't think I'm going to outplay him. You know, obviously I'm not going to because I've already let a phony bingo go after one turn. Um, Will plays L-I-P-E right here for 12, so probably some one-pointers and reasonably bingo-prone stuff. And uh, I've got a real, really weird rack here, E-H-H-I-O-W blank. So uh, there are really like three candidate plays here. Pause and look for them if you want. If not... W-H-O-M is one of them. You hold E-H-I blank. You try and bingo next turn. Uh, but there are other two, or two other non-bingos here. There's wished or wishes, which are basically the same play. Um, but you're playing off your blank, but you're scoring 60. It's basically a bingo because you double-double with W-H-H in there. Um, and, and I liked these plays quite a bit because aside from swished, which is, again, another one of those super volatile-ass hooks, um, there's, there's really nothing to do on the board. Maybe if you've got an M or a K, you've got that. But after he plays light, I don't think he's setting up a K. I think he's holding bingo prone stuff. So, you know, a lot of stuff pushed me to just play wished. I ended up making the blank a D, not an S. Um, but I played wished here, and I would do it again every time. I think there's nothing wrong with that play. So, boom. Yeah, he's bingoed, and I haven't. But I've got the lead because I was basically able to bingo with my WHH combination. Uh, Will's going to drop AG right here for 11, so again, he's caught up in those, like, I can't quite bingo racks, but he's pretty close. This is another reason I don't like playing open against people, because a lot of those, I've got seven good letters, I just don't have a seven-letter word. Well, you can bingo with floating uh, tiles to make eights, and so the fewer floating tiles you've got out there, the fewer eights are possible. Um, B E J O O O T is my draw. And this is one of the worst decisions I've made of the tournament. Uh, swished is a thing, and I'd like to get rid of that, but I'd also like to get rid of some of my vowels. And uh, I'm like, oh, yeah, oboe, that's a word. Cool, I can play off my vowels, that's great. And I just completely overlooked that I could play J-O-E right here. Uh, I think this is one of my huge weaknesses, is I'm, I'm blind when I have double or triple of a letter. I cannot you know, fathom a place where I don't undouble or untriple those letters. I've got to play two of them off. Even though I kept two H's the first two turns this game, I know it's one of the huge weaknesses in my game. Uh, but Joe is, like, definitely a better play than Oboe. And you can actually see Joe sets up the two O's that I'm keeping. I mean, I'm, I'm leaving Boot, and I can play Boot at M3 right next to Joe. So if Will doesn't have an O, and it's my spot, I'll score quite a bit there. You know, if he's fishing, he gets D1 or whatever, that's fine. I just didn't see Joe over the board. Maybe it's nerves from board one. Maybe it's my stupid blindness when I have triple O's. I don't really know what it was, but a uh, bad mistake by me there. There's also this really cool, flashy booty, um, but that doesn't do what I like to do to boards. Um, you see it sets up that bingo line at M9. That's a spot someone can bingo for 80 or 85. I really don't like setting those up if I can avoid it, but... You know, that that's a very good play, too, and I, I didn't see that either. I just saw Oboe, and that was bad. And, uh, yeah, probably deserved to lose after that. Will just plunks an O here and, like, gets exasperated by his next draw. He's like, <sighs> and he puts his tile down pretty aggressively. So my guess is he kept something like Retain or in that vein and drew something like a Q. You know, even a V, like, you can hope for a floater, so... You know, you shouldn't give tells away to your opponent like that. And there's a chance Will's trying to fake me out, but I don't think he's that guy. I don't think he would play like that. I think there are certain people who will. I know of a couple who do, but uh, I'm not going to name any names. But uh, I don't think Will's that guy. I draw this, and uh, with Will's one-tile fish, I feel like I probably want to address the best bingo line on the board, which is right here at D1. Any bingo ending in, like, an R, a D, or an S, which are three incredibly common letters for bingos to end with, will go right there. 
Um, the Genev spot is still available for, you know, Bingo's ending in an S. But I'm at least going to try and make Will work for it. Um, I'm going to play off the J here. Um, and really, there's a couple ways to do that. You know, you can play Joey um, or Joey. Some people would just drop Joy. Oh, great. I score 36. I keep EIRT. What's not to like? Uh, well, there's one huge thing that's not to like. Will's fishing, right? And if Will's missed a bingo again, the last thing you want to do is let him drop two tiles, like OT, for 30 points with a jot. You know, we're not worried about a triple-triple. You'd be crazy if you're you know, worried about Tolarjev or however you say that word through the J right now. Um, but... But if you can avoid letting Will fish for 30 and make him fish for 8, that's fantastic. So all of those things together, the defensive considerations plus the other defensive considerations, made me want to play Joey over here pretty badly compared to the other options. And that's just an example of you know playing defense. It doesn't always work out, but if he doesn't have the Genevs bingo, it's great. And lo and behold, he does not have the Genevs bingo. His fish or his uh, tell was correct. Will did indeed pick up the Q on his one tile fish. So, all right, I'm feeling great about that. Um, I want to say his leave, because it was annotated, was A-E-I-N-S-S. -S. He played off the O and then picked up the Q. And I think there was a stretch in here where, where Will had drawn several columns only bingos and couldn't get him down. So uh, I'll take what I can get, you know. But he can't be feeling good. Um, he can't be feeling good playing TWL. He was originally signed up to play the Collins uh, division in this field, but saw the TWL field and decided to give it a shot because it wasn't too strong. Um, and uh, probably not feeling good about that when you draw Collins only bingos. So I draw this, and I think this is a really cool position here because you've got you know plays over here next to the queue, and that seems like that's probably what you want to do most of the time. But we have to remember, I don't know that melanoses is a word, and I think really the 11 row is the only spot to get a good bingo down. You're going to need a bingo with IL in it to hit the N2 spot, and given Will, Will has fished one, he probably didn't have duplicate eyes. Um, and even then, IL, like, come on, I doubt it. Um, so I, I'm feeling like if I can play in the 10 row making Geld or Gelt, I'm in great shape here. Just keep thwacking the lines one at a time, shut down the board, close the game. That's how I like to play, you know. Um... And I've got a bunch of different words that play there. Uh, putrid is probably the highest scoring of them all. Um, but I had one thing in mind here, and that was I'd really like to hold on to my eye to play overlapping the Q next turn, if that's possible. Um, so I want to try and find a word that doesn't use the I or the L. Um, I've got the I-L together to make Q-I and O-I-L. So I like to just to play turd here. It still smacks all those lanes that I'm trying to smack. It even obscures the O quite a bit, um, but it holds the IL for me to score some points again next turn. And, and that's kind of what you want to do when you're playing defense and your opponent's fishing like this is keep scoring pretty well while they score less well trying to hit a bingo. Even if they do hit the bingo, you've caught up or you, you, you excelled ahead. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to score some, but score more down the road. I really like this play of turd as well. Um, so that's what I do. And Will's getting pretty frustrated. He just drops NA here for nine. Like, he's doing anything he can to open the board, try and get that bingo down, especially with the deficit he's built up. Um, EFILNPV is my rack. I'm feeling pretty solid right now. Like, Will's created this terrible bingo line. He's fished. I've got a big lead. You know, like, I'm in great shape. And then, well, I can play FIL right up here for a bazillion points as well. My plan paid off. I held the IL. I get to cash in. Now, FIL is a little bit scary because, like, if you bingo starting with an S, that's bad. Um, but sometimes you just, you've got to take your chances, right? I'll never play Vile here because Vile just allows them to bingo for, like, 95 or 85 a whole bunch of the time. And it makes almost any bingo playable in that triple line because E takes so many back hooks. So uh, we're going to play Phil. We're going to force him to have that S if he is going to bingo. There's some absolute killers out there. Like he might have assumed or something at 01 for like 9,000. But, you know, you can't play too scared in Scrabble. You have to keep scoring points. Uh, you can play a little scared. That's why we don't play Vile here. But um, So that's what happens there. And Will finally gives in and plays Xeruses. So I guess he drew the X. He's trying to bingo. He's not able to bingo. I want to say his extra tile was actually uh, an S here, or an A here. Um, so he had one of those killer plays. He had Assure over here for 52. But Assure is kind of a game-losing play. Like, you're not going to bingo for a while because you're holding the X. 
and you're still down by quite a bit. Zerus has opens the board. It puts me in a, a kind of scary position. So I, I don't mind this play at all. I think Will did the right thing here. Will typically does the right thing in Scrabble, just FYI. Um, if, if you haven't watched his annotated games on cross tables, watch his annotated games on cross tables. He's very, very good at Scrabble. Um, so Zerus comes down for Will. I have ACE and NPV. Um, and, and my play, I think, is pretty easy here. You know, Apex is just 1,000 points. Well, it's actually just 39 points. I wish it were 1,000 points. I've got other plays like Carvin or Craven right here that would leave the X open, but it would do more to block more bingos, and it would hold better. You know, you're not too excited to hold CNNV with the leave you have in this, or with the lead you have in this situation. I um, mean, I totally don't know what to do here, like, at all. Um, I could see the argument definitely for playing like Craven or Carvin. Um, Craven you might want to play because it doesn't give up as many points probably, except maybe it does. Um, Carvin you might want to play because it actually sets up that 2F spot, and I've said this before, but when you're winning you just want to set up spots to score 30 or 40 and goes to a victory. You're just trying to dodge the, the huge plays, right? Um, so Carvin and Craven both make sense. If we uh, take a peek at those details over there, um, Quackle says that after Carvin, uh, Will's going to score uh, a little bit less, and I'm going to score a little bit more. So that's kind of hard to tell, you know, looking, well, like, why do I score more and he scores less? But uh, that's, that's what Quackle says. Quackle really likes Carvin here. Of course, Quackle's not really good at handling big leads or big deficits. Quackle just kind of does the same thing. It tries to get as ahead as possible, but it doesn't factor in, like, the volatility of different plays. So I'm not sure I played this one right. If I were playing this game again right now, I think I would still set down Apex um, and just try and score as many points as I can. But, you know, if somebody's really good out there and they want to tell me what they think about the play, please, I'm all ears. Um, that, that's definitely one I could go back and, and redo. I dodge another bullet. Will's just unable to do anything, even though he's got his bingo line open now in the end row. He just drops Datura here, however you say that word. I don't know how to say any of these words. Uh, I draw C E E L N N V, and uh, this was a really tough position for me because I just didn't see a lot of available options, like almost nothing good. Um, there's one thing that stands out quite a bit. I didn't see this for a long time, and that's 11 right here. It scores 32, but the terrible thing about 11 is Will's actually able to bingo on a triple word, right? He can start a word at F or 1F and go across, and there's just barely seven spaces here. So that's not something you're ever thrilled about doing, but there's just nothing else to do. Elvin? Like, no, I'm not opening up a triple-triple with a lead like this. Elvin here? Like, that just seems stupid. No, no. Like, do I want to play Nene and hold C-E-L-V? Yeah, I don't think so. I thought for a while about playing Nerve, and like, is that okay? Is You know, I, I really just couldn't figure out what to do in this situation. So finally, I'm like, whatever, 32 is a lot of points. I'm up by over 100. I'll, I'll just do it, you know? I'll just play 11 and, and just try and score. And then Will very quickly grabbed a tile and set down an R and an O, and I'm like, okay, yep, I deserve this. I opened a bingo line. I'm going to get crushed. And then he just set down another O and, and said 13 and hit the clock. I was like, oh... Thank God, you know, like that's his opportunity in, in my head to like throw this board open and play ROO right there or something crazy like that, you know, like open a triple triple and have a hundred point bingo line available. Um, so, so I, I, you know, looking back at his rack, I think what he did was right, but I was scared. I opened and then he closed and he only scored 13 and there's not a lot of lines left. I'm like, okay, I'm probably going to win this game now. Oh, missed. I'm supposed to type down here, aren't I? Um, so this was fine. I, I decide I'm just going to go ahead and play right here. TIC, I love holding C's and V's with a lead because, like, there's no twos with C's or V's and you just kill stuff really easily. I wasn't able to hold my V last turn, but bam, I'm playing a C and holding another C. I crush this line. Will's not bingoing. He's basically going to have to hit an H through Detura or, or back hook that word um, in order to do anything now. So... Tick comes down. I feel really good about that play. Um, and then Will does actually have a bingo through the R into Chura. And this is a junk rack otherwise. So it's like, ah, you know, I blocked the more conducive spot and he's got the bingo in the less conducive spot. And just like my game against uh, Josh Sokol, it's one of the worst things that can happen. 
they bingo without a blank, with a blank unseen late in the game. Oh, this is bad. He's probably going to go get that blank because I don't have it. Um, C-I-M-N-N-R-U was my rack here. And I couldn't figure out what to do. Like, suddenly a bingo is, is bad for me. Um, and there's not too much I can do about the back of Datura. Um, it does take a back S, you can see that. Um, so, you know, what do I do? I, I can't block that spot super well. I guess I could try playing something like Monik there, but no. Like, I'm not going to put a C right there with this lead. No, no. Um... Incur right here seemed like the best thing I can do. Like, I've just I've played off a bunch of tiles, and, you know, it gives me some shots at that blank. Uh, one kind of scary thing about Incur is there's only five vowels left in the whole bag, so if I miss on all of them, I might be in bad shape. Even if I draw one, I might be in bad shape. Um, so maybe I just want to play a... You know, maybe a, a Unicum was suggested to me as, like, yeah, you should have played Unicum up here. First off, I don't know that word. Um, second off, even if I do, like, can I justify scoring 11 right now and not doing anything about the shape of the board? Like, maybe I can. Maybe that's fine, because Will doesn't have the best bingo lines, and even if he bingos with Datura um, in the 14 row, like, I'll probably hit him back kind of hard. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Do you play Incur this way? Like, I really don't think so. M N N with like five vowels left. I'm not sure. I think I would play incur pretty much every time out of this situation. Mun? I don't think I'm gonna play mun. Like, I, I don't know. But incur felt good to me at the time, except it enabled Will to drop this right here, Y-U-K. And Y-U-K, they just added the back E to it, Yuk, whatever the heck that is. Um, and I do have an E, but the consonants did hit me otherwise. I've got D-E-F, M-N-T-W now. And there's three tiles in the bag. If you look at that unseen pool, I hope you can see it with the video quality on YouTube, but it's blank, A-D-E-I-R-S-T, and then another A and another T. So, like, that's incredibly conducive to a bingo. And uh, the Datura spot is available. A lot of sevens will fit down along uh, the 14 row. And then, of course, Uke is still there as well. And I'm not really able to drop something like this because Jif is going to take a back... Uh, excuse me, Jif is going to take a back uh, S and I'll lose, or even a back T. You know, maybe I can play something like N-E-W right here, but then if he is able to play like anything with an S as a second or third letter, I'm still dead. Or if he's able to sneak something in other, where, uh, other places, if he's able to bingo through the U, I also think I die after N-E-W. Um, and I've got to do something about Uke, like, that's huge. But if I play something like F-E-W and he bingos, I lose. Um, you know, so I, I was trying to figure out what to do. I'd really like to play two tiles here if I can. And so I'm like, okay, I can play W-E or E-W or F-E or E-W or e -W over here, something like that. Oh, well, not there. I can't play E-W there. I can play E-W right there, though. You know, there, there's some stuff, maybe, that I can do. Um, and even if Will does bingo, like if I draw one of those vowels in the bag, I'll probably be okay. So I was looking at EW, and then I decided, you know what? MW synergizes better with the two A's and the E in the bag. Like, if I can play Ma or something like that, you know, M-A-W or M-A-W-N, anything along the, the, that vein, like, underneath Will's bingo, I'll probably be okay. I can still play On or something like that, and I'll be okay. So... Yeah, I'm going to play off the F. And then I thought for a while, should I play F-E? Should I play E-F? I, I drew out the entire unseen pool, but I mentioned earlier in the video that it was very cold in the room, and I was very nervous, right? I'm about to beat Will Anderson on board one, annotated, you know, like this has been a dream of mine for years. And as I'm writing out the unseen tiles, I was shaking. I was writing these letters underhand, and I wrote lowercase a, or lo lowercase, or lowercase a, lowercase a, and then my D, I tried to go up with the stem of it, but it ended up being, it looked like another A. In fact, I can show you on my score pad. Um, right here, A-A-A-E-I-R-S-T-T. -T. Um, that, that stem of the D just didn't come up high enough. And uh, so I wrote down um, on my score sheet right here, re-defeats. 
And then I was like, no, that's not there. He doesn't have the tiles. There would have to be a D in the unseen pool for him to have re-defeat or two E's. So that's not a thing. Um, I'll play F-E right here. And that's it, you know. And uh, then immediately, Will sets down re-defeat. Uh, I think he made the... Uh, I don't remember which E he made a blank, but... That was his rack. He had re-defeats. It's a triple-triple. That's 158 points. <laughs> and uh, I was just... I thought he was joking, because I used to play games with Jeff Tefano all the time, and he would always pretend like he had the out bingo, and he'd set it all down, and then one of the tiles wasn't actually the right tile, and he'd give you a mini heart attack for like two seconds, and then it, it was fine. But this was not that. Will actually had a triple-triple, and it was because I couldn't write the letter D properly, because I was shaking uncontrollably. And it was really sad. Like, really, really, really sad. Welcome to board one, Matt. Um, you suck. So that was the end of that. Uh, I don't totally remember how this game played out afterwards. I want to say that Will drew an A, and I had, like, all of this crap, and I... What did I play? I, I don't know. I was so mentally just crushed after that happened. I think I... Something over here. I think I... Wait or something. Mint. I think I played... Whatever, I played something, and then Will goes out, and I lost. I didn't even write it down, because I was just so sad, right? Like, have you ever seen somebody lose a game so badly? A game I was winning the entire game, and Will kept missing his fishes, and I shut down the board, and I did exactly what I wanted, and I just got one bad rack at exactly the wrong time. Now, I, we went back and looked at it, and even if I hadn't played FE, even if I had played EF or, or WE or EW, I don't think I would have been able to squeak out the end game. When Will has ADERST blank on his rack, he can kind of do whatever he wants in that situation and win. But still, it's just a little insult to injury. Like, not only did you blow this game, you got triple tripled on with a 9 for 158. Welcome to board 1. So that was that, you know, probably the most spirit-crushing thing that has ever happened to me at a tournament. Until round 30, stay tuned. Um, yeah, maybe it was round 20. I think it was round 29, but uh, it's, it's bad. Okay, well, there's that. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll put up more games soon.